Hello, Victoria. Look, I've got a net to catch words. I've got words here, lots of words I've been catching. You know why? Why? Because the story today is about catching words. It's Philly's fortune, a story about self-expression. It's actually a French story from France. The authors are Agnet Lelestrade and Valeria do Campo. And the English translation is in the hands of Julia Frank McNeil. So here it goes. This is the end paper, full of letters. Right? For example, N, I, S, O. Victoria, I can form a word in Spanish with S and with I, C. Lovely. There exists an odd place in a strange land where words are made in a huge word factory. How strange. Shops and boutiques all over town, they sell words because in this odd place, in this strange land, people must buy and swallow the words they need to speak. So if you want sweet words, you have to go and buy sweet girls. Or also big words and fat words. This huge word factory churns out words all day and all night. Beautiful words and hideous phrases, grown-up terms and baby talk. Precious and silly expressions, all sorts of words that people need to speak to one another. As you may expect, some words are very valuable and they cost a lot of money. And not everybody in this odd place, in this strange land, can buy those words. You may find words in some places, for example... Yes, in litter. But these words are boring words. I mean, who would like to say plop or plant? No musicality. Or some people can buy them on sale. Words on sale, five words for one penny. But these words are all fashioned. Who uses carriage or crank nowadays? But you know what? Sometimes words float like this and so you can catch them with a net and that is what Phyllis does with his friends and so they catch words like daisy or words like sugar and they keep them and then at dinner time they tell their parents those words. Now today, Felix caught three words, but he won't share them at dinner time. No, he's keeping them for Sibel, because tomorrow is her birthday. This is Sibel, his neighbor. And, and he wishes he could say to Sibel, hello, how are you? Or he wishes he could say, happy birthday. And he really, really wishes he could say, I love you. But he doesn't have those words. Instead, he just smiles at her. Up at the top of the stairs, Phyllis sees Oscar. And he is furious. What is Oscar doing? He's going to ruin my surprise. Oscar does not smile at Phyllis. Instead, he turns to Sibel and Bert blurts out, I love you, Sibel. When we grow up, I know we will marry. <gasps> oh. Wow. Phyllis thinks those words must have cost a fortune. My words are so ordinary and so simple. What will Sibel think? Phyllis 
takes a deep breath and he finds all the love that he's got in his heart and he utters his words off they flow to Sibel and they are like beautiful butterflies his three words three beautiful butterflies cherry ruby chimes Sibel stops smiling and looks right at Phyllis. She doesn't have any words to use. Instead, she gently and softly kisses Phyllis' cheek. Phyllis has one more word left. He captured it a long time ago in a butterfly net. He has been saving it all this time. He looks at Sibel right in the eyes and he says, again! And that's the end of the story.